Hey everybody, Mike from MyTechie here, here to talk to you guys today about managing storage locations. Now, I had a user contact me just recently, and he wanted to go ahead and talk about how to set the default location for your storage of your databases. Now, remember, installing SQL Server, it's not a necessity that the instance be backed up, unless you're trying to back up the security users and everything else. If you're really only truly concerned with the storage capacity, the storage capabilities, and where everything is stored, so for backup purposes, uh, it's very important to note that you don't really need to back up the instance location. However, it's not a bad idea, it's just not a necessity. So today we'll talk about the data storage locations, where you can store your database. We're going to talk about data migration, which it means if you already have restored your database and it's at one location, how we can move it. And we're going to go ahead and then talk about how to set the default path so when you go to restore a database, it can be in a different location. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and hop into our SQL Server that we've been using in the past. And we're going to go ahead and open up Studio Management. We're going to go ahead and connect into our instance. And when we're here, we're going to notice that if we can expand the databases section, we're going to have a VentureWorks LT 2008. Now, you saw me uh, get this database on here before, and but if I take a look at this, if I right-click on it and go to Properties, notice the location where under files it's under C program files Microsoft SQL Server and then the instance directory now it's not a bad thing however that's not on a RAID 5 and normally when you go and back up data you want it on a larger storage array uh, such as a RAID 5 for of course for parity purposes if you lose one of your drives you can keep on working w w uh, until you have time to repair that drive now let's go ahead and take a peek at the setup of this machine now currently. We'll go ahead and close out of here. Right click and manage. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the disk management here. So under the disk management we have our C drive which we have 20 gigs on. Then we have our E drive which is, you can see here is a RAID 5 connection which we have three 8 gig hard drives. And with this being said, we also have another one right down below that's the SQL Backup. And that is just nothing but a basic partition on a basic volume that's going to contain 8 gigs worth of data. As you can see over here, the capacity is 8 gigs. So, lo and behold, I definitely want to go install all my things on this SQL RAID 5 so that if I lose any one of these disk 1, 2, or 3, I can definitely keep on working and then go repair that data or that disk and then I'll be able to definitely work and it should be able to repair itself and rebuild itself. So we'll close out of here and we'll go ahead and show you that we can move this database. Now when you want to move this database you really have two options. You can do a backup and restore which is one option. Um, then delete the database. Um, or a better option, especially if you're losing or uh, moving large database files, it's definitely a good idea to do a backup first, absolutely. But bef before you move it, and when you go to move it, to detach it. So I can right click on here, go to tasks, and detach. Now note that you have two options here one is to drop all current connections, another one is to update the statistics. Normally, I don't t touch that update statistics. You can. Um, it's more or less for larger scale databases if you're really trying to track the data. Um, if it's going to be moved or you really want to do an analysis purpose, it's really good for auditing, absolutely. So, we're not going to go ahead and touch that today. We're just going to simply go and drop the connections. And we'll click OK. And notice how, boom, it's got gone away from our databases. It's no longer attached to the SQL Server. So again, we noted that that file was stored into my computer, C drive, program files, Microsoft SQL Server, MSSQL 10 underscore 50 point MSSQL server, i.e. the instance name, MSSQL, then data. 
Now notice there are my two files. Now if you if you didn't watch the prior videos and you don't understand the difference, this is your transaction log file and this is your actual true data file. Now why is it important to have that transaction log file? Because log files can grow tremendously very quickly, especially if you're using like a time system where you're having multiple adjustments to the database, updates, deletes, uh, you know, inserts, everything from A to Z of the, when you're modifying the database, all those queries get stored right into this log, uh, transaction log file. So in essence, if you've kept the transaction log file from the very beginning, you can theoretically back up or restore your entire database if your if your actual data file ever gets corrupted. Because all it's gonna do is execute a huge long list of queries in order. Okay? The, so this goes everything from the DDL, the data definition language, where it's actually building your database, all the way into the actual dyna uh the inserting of the database, inserting all the, uh, the content and the data into it. Now the MDF file of course is your live data file, it's the structure, it's all the data, the whole nine yards. And in this case it's taking way less amount of time, or a space I should say, to create the database and put all the data in than it has to actually go ahead and have the data in the database. Eventually this will grow and every time something is modified in the database that will grow. Uh, of course, the actual database file itself would grow unless it, w it was a delete, of course, right? So we'll go ahead and what we got to do is we can't, again, we couldn't move these files unless we detached it because if you did that, you wouldn't actually get a true connection. It would actually have a, a tell you that it was corrupted, especially if you have a concurrent connection to the database while you do it. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move these two files into our RAID 5 partition, or our RAID 5 array. So we can see right here we have the E drive, and underneath there I've created two separate folders. Now a lot of compliances require you guys to have two separate locations, okay? Um, it's very important to understand that. Now they don't really require you guys to have two separate partitions or two separate volumes. However, they do require you to have two separate locations of log and data. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our data file in first. So notice I created the SQL data folder, and underneath that, I if you guys were doing this on an external RAID array where it was on the network somewhere, um, you guys might want to be backing up multiple different SQL servers and types of SQL servers. So I always, always, always put a uh, SQL 2008 R2 ENT. I put the version of the SQL server that I'm going to be backing up. Then I put the instance name. Now, if we're in a larger scale environment, I might even prefix the instance name with the server name that is actually backing up the data file. In this case, it would be SQL-03-01 underscore the instance name. In this case, we're only in a couple SQL Server instances, and we'll never go ahead and duplicate the same instance name. So we'll just go ahead and come in here, and we will go ahead and just drag the MDF file right in here. Now, in essence, I can just go ahead and delete this MDF now that it's successfully copied. And we'll go ahead and just do the same exact thing. I've created the same exact uh, structure in the logs location. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this data to logs and just cheat here. And I'll drag that log file right here. And I'll go ahead and delete the log file originally. Now, if you haven't watched my videos on how to install SQL Server, I highly suggest you do so because during that video series I went ahead and showed you guys on an important key factor which was the security aspect and basically you have different users that get assigned a different SQL Server account and so on and so forth. However, this one's a little bit different. Now the reason why I create separate instance folders is because each instance has its own group of security SQL users. Now they are a local group of users that you would need to enable on any directory that you want SQL Server database engine to read and write from. So if I right click on this folder and go to properties, I went to security. Now I already have put the user in there, but I'll show you on how to find it. If you click on add, you're going to want to change the location from your domain to local. 
Now, if you've installed SQL Server on a domain controller, which we in the videos we also told you not to do, which is not a good idea, it doesn't matter if you only have your entire directory here because SQL Server is smart enough to know that you did what you did, and it will actually go ahead and put the users as a domain user into your Active Directory. So we're going to go ahead and just simply highlight our local. We're going to click on the Advanced tab and click on Find Now. We'll expand this, and if we scroll down here, you're going to notice that you have several SQL users. Now, again, they're not users. They are user groups, and it's very important to note that. So over here, you could technically define these things manually. However, I just use the group, and it's pretty secure in that aspect. So I'm going to use this SQL Server group here. Now, it's very important that you select the proper one. The one that you want is SQL Server, MSSQL User, SQL, and then the, this would be the name of your server, and then the instance name. So if you guys called your, your instance something different than MSSQL Server, of course it would be different. So we'll highlight that, click OK, click OK one more time. Now it's very important that you actually give this user full control because it's going to modify certain properties of the directory and it's very important that you do that. You don't want to just give it modify and write access, however you could. Um, it's a better idea to give this thing full control of this directory. So we'll say OK. Now note, if I had two separate instances, they couldn't read and write from each other. So if I had another instance called Billy Bob, Billy Bob's instance couldn't read and write from the MSSQL server instance. Or better yet, as a real life example, I have sales and support and let's say marketing. Marketing's databases or database engine can't write to the sales database location and the sales database can't do it vice versa. So it's very good an idea to put instant folders in there and you apply the security separately so that way they can't read and write from each other. So let's go ahead now, now that we've copied both the data file as well as the log file to our location, let's go ahead and close out of here. And we'll go back to our SQL Studio Management and we're, we need to get it back online so that people can actually connect to it. Now remember, SQL Server is a service-based application, meaning the people who are connecting to it, the clients that are connecting to it, don't care where the database is located. All they care about is that they can connect to the file and they can read and write from the file. And SQL Server takes care of the rest in the back end. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and right click on databases. We're going to select attach. We're going to click on add. And we're going to go ahead and browse to our location. In this case we're not going to go ahead and attach this local C drive and program files. We're going to go out to that E drive we're going to select the SQL data. Now it's very important. You're not going for the log file. The log file should be located manually. In a second I'll show you how that's done. So make sure you go for the SQL data file. And there it is. So we'll highlight it and click OK. And notice right away it tries to pull in that log file in the old location. Now we deleted it. So again it's giving us a message saying hey I can't find that log file that's not a problem. Let's go ahead and hit the browse button and now we want to find that log file. So we can just simply go and collapse that, go to our log file location 2008 and SQL and select our log file that corresponds with this MDF file. We'll, we'll click OK and boom if we now go ahead and click on OK we've successfully attached this to the SQL Server. Now, you're going to notice this a lot, and look how we don't see the database here yet. You're going to learn that you're going to have to push F5 or refresh at the very top here quite a bit in SQL, because it doesn't have that great of cache and repetition. So all you got to do is on the main databases here, we just hit F5, and boom, there's our adventure works right there. Again, if we right click on this and go to properties now, highlight the files property. Notice to the right hand side we have the log. If we expand this we have the data and the log. The data is located in the data section, the log is located in the log section and the actual file names are at the very beginning. So this concludes our tutorial on data migration. We learned how to change the data actually we still have to set the pass, the default pass and that's pretty easy to do. We showed you how to create a different data storage, 
how to migrate your data. Now, if you attach any other SQL uh, databases to the server, you want the default path upon restoring to be again not attaching. I'm sorry. If you restore databases to the SQL Server, you want the default path to be these locations, these MSSQL Server locations, in particular for this instance. So we're gonna right-click on our main connection up here. We're gonna go to Properties. We're gonna select Database Settings, and notice right down here, Database Default Locations. You have a separate location for both data and log. All right. You can simply change those upon restoring. The default locations will appear for you, and that's it. So this will con this will definitely now conclude our data migration, our data storage um, tutorial for you guys. If you guys have any questions, please go ahead and leave comments or message me. And also down below, please click on the like and also the subscribe button, and stay tuned for more SQL Server videos to come your way. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.